Hello, my friends. I hope you've all had a great summer getting out there. I'm home, happy, and healthy. One week ago today, I completed my amazing adventure on the Great Divide. Woo, yes! I've unpacked everything, washed my stinky clothes, stinky, hosed down my bike, stocked up on beans, ta-da! And now I'm going through all the footage and I'm really excited to share these stories. You're gonna see the grace and beauty of this country through its landscapes and the wonderful people I met along the way. Look who's up and ready. Good morning, Mira, good morning. People have asked me what's harder, riding my bike all day, every day, or editing the footage. Well, I gained over 100,000 feet of elevation in the 26 days of riding the divide, but editing is by far more time consuming. This footage will easily take a few months to complete. You know, I take my time with editing. It's where the story is built. I put things in, I take them out, I put them in again, then I go for a run to clear my head and I come back and I change it all up. It's a crazy process, but I love it. And the goal is to create something that puts you right there with me. I want you to feel the excitement, the ups and downs, and the freezing cold hailstorms. <laughs> ow! Ow, 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 ow! Stop it! I want to give you a quick rundown of my creative process. There's a lot of elements that go into making just one video. And for a trip like this, there will be about 20 videos total. First of all, I'm dealing with footage from three cameras, my drone, my Sony, and my GoPro. The drone gives a spectacular bird's eye view of the terrain. These little machines have really opened up the door for capturing cinematic footage that just 10 years ago would have been only possible with a full on helicopter. They're also fun to fly when I'm not crashing into trees. I try to use the drone about twice a day, depending on my battery situation. A battery only lasts 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the drone. It's a full-time job keeping all these cameras charged, and that's why I travel with many extra batteries. The GoPro is the camera that I use most. I keep it right on my handlebars for easy access and sometimes I attach it to my helmet. It gets all the riding shots, some landscapes, and I constantly pull it out throughout the day and talk to it. But in reality, I'm talking to you. All right, made it to the top of Carnero Pass, 10,166 feet. It's a funny feeling constantly chatting to a camera, but I like this style because you get the raw, in the moment emotion. So I'm just riding along and I see out of the corner of my eye something brown dart off the road and my body just froze for a second and my heart started beating super fast and it felt like an electric shock through my body and it's amazing what a millisecond of fear will do to the human body. It was just a deer, <laughs> but still, it scared me. I was like, oh God! Please don't be a bear. These sound bites help tell the story of what I'm going through as a rider, the random thoughts that pop into my head, and this helps bring you, the viewer, into the experience. So back there when I said, oh, it doesn't feel like I've been climbing much today. Well, the climbing gods heard that and gave it to me. They slapped me upside the face. This camera is great, but it's limited. It has incredible image stabilization, but it's only for wide shots. If I used this to show you far away mountaintops, you wouldn't see anything. In comes the Sony RX100 Mark VII. This is the beauty cam. The picture quality on this camera is way better than a GoPro, and it can also zoom, which allows me to highlight things that are far away. I use this for pretty much all the shots when I'm off the bike. I love capturing flowers, insects, rainbows, or whatever I think is cool and interesting. I also set this camera on the ground with a little tripod and do ride-bys. I do this many times throughout the day, and even though it slows down my riding, 
I like these shots because it provides a different angle than the GoPro. Yeah. This camera has an external mic as well, and I use it for all my interviews. I love bike riding beauty shots, but I truly feel that the heart and soul of my content comes from sharing stories with the locals. Everything here is free, and the only thing that we ask when people stay with us is, is that they pay it forward. Mm -hmm. We like to think that we have four acres of love right here and kindness, mm -hmm. and we just hope that uh, any of that love and kindness would just spread out into the world. So that's what that's why, that's we, why do we do it. That's why we do this. Okay, like I said before, the editing process is where it all comes together, but it doesn't come together quickly. I spend countless hours going through footage from the three cameras and blending them together to make something that's hopefully engaging and a little bit magical. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. The sun just came up over the mountains and on the opposite side of the sky, there are two rainbows. It's a sunrise rainbow. Now that is a miracle. Wow. <laughs> Wake up everybody. <laughs> the initial stage of the editing process is slow and overwhelming. Staring at footage all day is hard on my brain and sometimes I feel like my head is going to explode. <laughs> After I get a bunch of clips into a timeline, I start tightening things up and trimming clips down and eliminating shots that don't progress the story. Oh wait, music, I gotta talk about music. The right song is super important and I spend hours at the beginning of a project sifting through an online library called Musicbed. Each video usually has about five to seven different songs that I weave in and out of to build emotion. My favorite styles are acoustic, folksy songs and ambient electronic stuff. As things start coming together, I continually go through the timeline to fine tune each clip. This is my favorite part where all the hard work pays off and I'm finally seeing the finish line. Oh yeah, baby, I'm almost done. At the very end, I add in text for names, locations, and distances and make sure to convert everything to kilometers and meters for my viewers outside the USA. You're welcome, Swedish brother Carl. Now it's time to upload. And you might think that this is the easy part, but it takes quite a bit of time and it's very important. You gotta create a visually pleasing thumbnail, come up with a catchy title, and then build up a library of keywords that helps with search engine optimization. As a viewer, you never see these magic words, but the idea is that they help drive traffic to the video. I use a program called TubeBuddy for this. It helps tell me which keywords are effective in Google searches. This is the nerdy back end to YouTube and it's confusing, ever changing, and I learn more each day. So that's my process and this is what I'll be consumed with for the next few months as I roll out videos from the Great Divide. Like I said, I'm really excited to share all this with you and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching my videos. It really means the world to me. Without you, it would just be my mom watching my videos. Aww. I also wanna thank the team at Priority Bicycles. They played a huge role in making this adventure a reality. As many of you know, I was riding a prototype bicycle on the Divide, a bike that we developed together, the 600X. I'd always wanted a bikepacking bike with the gates and pinion drivetrain, and we made the dream come true. Stay tuned for a full review of this awesome bike down the road, 
and a release date in case you want to get one. Still raining, still cold. We're still biking forward, making progress. Now for the Patreon ask. I put my heart and soul into this channel and it takes a lot of time and resources. This is my full-time job. If you have the ability, please join my Patreon. I can't tell you how much it helps in keeping this channel moving forward. The link is below. However, don't feel bad if you can't. I totally get it. My channel will always be free and open to everyone who wants to enjoy it. Okay, now it's time for a tiny taste of what I saw out there every day. Here's some beautiful drone footage and some sappy music to get you excited for the upcoming series. Music 